please remain standing for a moment of silent reflection for our service men and women throughout the world and also those who have passed away in our community, especially former city councilman Thomas Francis, who served as a member of city council from 1970 to 1974. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mr. Perry? Here. Mr. Donahue? Here. Mr. Evans? Here. Mr. Gahan? Here. Mr. Rogan? Please dispense with the reading of the minutes. Third order, 3A minutes of the Historic Architecture Review Board meeting held February 21, 2019. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3B, controller's report for month ending March 31, 2019. Are there any comments? Uh, yes, I, um, Mrs. Rita, I'll get together with you after the meeting. I have a few questions about the uh, controller's report. I can't seem to find where I put it right now, but I'll get together with you after the meeting. Oh, I know what it was. Um, there was a capital expenditure in here. I just want clarification on Recreation Resource Inc. for $104,674.50. If we could just get together with the uh, city controller to find out what that was. And there was one other thing. Um, grant match for Medico Industries for $514,892. If we could just find out uh, clarification on that as well. Thank you. And all other questions received and filed. 3C minutes of the Scranton Firefighters Pension Commission meeting held March 20, 2019. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3D, minutes of the non-uniform municipal pension board meeting held March 20, 2019. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3E, minutes of the Scranton Police Pension Commission meeting held March 20, 2019. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3F, minutes of the composite pension board meeting held March 20, 2019. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3G, agenda for the non-uniform municipal pension board meeting held April 17, 2019. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3H, tax assessor's results report for hearing date held April 10, 2019. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3I, agenda for the city planning commission meeting to be held April 24, 2019. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. Do any councilmen have any announcements at this time? Uh, I have two. Uh, this is just a reminder that refuse and recycling collection will be one day behind this week. DPW worked on Good Friday and we're off today. Next Monday, April 29th at 515, council will hold a public caucus with the city's recycling coordinators to discuss the city's recycling program and recent developments and changes to recycling made at the county level. There's been a lot of questions about it, and so to be honest, a lot of confusion. So uh, they'll be in here and uh, hopefully clear a lot of that up for us. Thank you. Fourth order, citizens' participation. Our first speaker tonight is Faye Franis. Faye Franis, Granton. First of all, I'd like to say I absolutely think we should rebid this contract for the collection agency for the garbage. And thank you very much for Mr. Perry, Mr. Donahue, and Mr. Gahn for asking very tough questions. They were very important. You asked the question of how, uh, how much money do we get in from the $16.8 million that is owed. They didn't have an answer. Now, wouldn't you think that would be one of the answers they knew they were going to be asked that they should have had that answer? I'd like to, when I go back and rewatch this, I'm going to count all the answers they didn't answer, all the questions, rather, they didn't answer. Many, many, many. Very convenient by saying there was a lawsuit. And they said uh, they have options, but they don't want to discuss what they are. First of all, who are they to have options? They don't make the law in the city. And they said, when you asked, uh, what do you think you, how do you think you deserve being the collection agent for the city? They said, we have two wonderful employees. They need 202 employees to get the 16.8 million. They should be gone. They, think about the answers they answered. They didn't. One after the other after the other. They should not be here. What have they done for us? Nothing. And why can't City Hall, you know all the money they're getting for the fines and the penalties, wouldn't that pay for two employees to add to the city to do the work that they're doing? That money, like you said, Mr. Gama, come into the city, not to them. Why don't you consider hiring two more people for the Treasury's office? 
to do the work that they aren't doing or else get rid of them as soon as possible. Uh, as far as the recycling, last two weeks ago when they came and picked up tin cans and that paper, they left can after can after can full, even on my block, just full, because they didn't have the right things in the can. But isn't it odd how they very quickly didn't pick up the recyclables? They did it as fast as a bunny. In other words, why aren't they doing that with the garbage? They certainly had a plan not to pick up the recyclables very easily. So I don't want to hear about a uh, health hazard. And as far as city property, uh, you can't leave the garbage because it's on the curb and the city owns it? No. Anytime you get a bill from the water company or the gas company, you own from the curb in, not the city. Anything happens from the curb in, you're responsible. Somebody falls on your property, somebody trips on your curb, you are responsible, not the city. So it's up to you, I believe, to do some things like Chris Kelly had in that article, and it was wonderful. Every sentence he had in that article last Wednesday about the garbage collection, about the fees, how this city has to do something now, not right now. So none of this looking into things. I think it's up to you, Mr. Gahn, Mr. everybody up there, Mr. Donahue, in motions or whenever tonight, to ask the administration, what are they going to do about this? I know you can't make them do it, but you could certainly make sure that you ask that they do something as soon as possible, like not pick up the garbage. And as far as this woman saying she doesn't believe in shaming people, I do. If there's hardships, they could certainly be addressed. But as far as the rest of the people that don't pay, shame, shame, shame. No, it's same with the stormwater. Once you initiate that fee, you know what? You're going to start all over again with the delinquencies. How are you going to get that money? Why would people pay for stormwater when they know they don't have to pay for the garbage fee? If you don't start doing something, this is going to take effect for all fees that you have. Why should we keep on paying whether or not? There's going to be a revolution in this city, I swear. So I don't know what's going to happen here. And then I saw another thing in the agenda tonight. First time I ever saw it. Joan pointed it out to me. In the absence of the mayor, where's he going? On vacation? Going to jail? Where's he going? All of a sudden, it's in the absence of the mayor? Why is that? Anybody know? Why is that written in the agenda? I, I had the same question when I read it, and I had misread pull the last resolution we passed from the Scranton Lackawanna Health and Welfare Authority a couple of years ago, and it had the same language. So I'm guessing they just copied it. Mm -hmm. But I did well, have the same question. It's there for a reason. Yes. So. But, but, but it only, from what I could tell, it, it only pertains to legislation regarding the Scranton Lack. Lackawanna Health and Welfare Authority. Well, it still needs to be addressed. But I'm asking you, Mr. Donahue and Mr. Gahn, to please do something tonight in the form of asking the mayor to do something about this garbage pickup because people are fed up with paying. I mean, you must know, why should we pay when they're deliberately not paying? It's not right. Mr. Evans, could you please, what you answered to me last week in motions, could you get me proof of that? I know you said that the money is going into a separate account for only the DPW, the money coming in. But I'd like to see some proof of that. Could you do that? What kind of proof do you want? Written. Written proof I'll, I'll, show me that the money is going into a certain account, not just your word for it. There has I'll, to be a record. I'll discuss it with Mr. Bozzoni to see what he can respond with, and I'll get back to you. Next week? If I get an answer, I'll get an answer next week. Yes, if I don't get an answer, you won't get an answer. So yes, when I get an answer, you'll get an answer. But, but you should be able to get an answer within the week, right? I hope so, yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Marie Schumacher. Uh, yes, tonight I would like to pick up uh, where I left off last week with the sad story of trash and so many things that come before this council and there's a fire and then all of a sudden somebody puts a blanket over the fire and it's extinguished and you move on and nothing ever happens. So we're going, we started going back five years ago on this. So I'm gonna pick up in, on uh, minutes from the 7th of September, 2015. Schumacher, now on the trash fees. The last payment was due by the 1st of September. Are you able to tell me whether the what percentage paid this time? Did we beat the 25% of past or did we not? And if we did not, which direction and what was it? Mr. Wexler, I think actually there's a grace period until the 30th of September. 
The final payment, and that, of course, there is, it was due on the first, but there is a fi uh, thir 30. Mr. Wexler, it's not the vacant properties, if it's, it's if you have rented them, if you have vacancies. Oh, my bad, okay. Mr. Wexler, that determines if the fee was due or not. Uh, December uh, 8th, 2016. Now, as far as the garbage fee, it's $300. But in the budget for the landfill costs, if you take all of the people that pay the garbage fee and divide it by, that's an, it's another $66. So basically, the people are really paying $366 a year, not $300. What about the landfill, the recyclable grant? When you take things to the recyclable place, the city gets money for that. Where does that money go? Where does it go? Does anybody know? Mr. Evans? I'm sure it goes into the general fund. Uh, of th this is, and then um, Ms. Franis, uh, pardon me, I'm sure it goes in the general fund. Uh, Ms. Franis, okay, so why isn't that money going toward lowering the garbage fee? Mr. Evans, Faye, we have talked about this. We are, Mrs. Franis, we did not talk about the money for the recyclables going to the garbage. Mr. Evans, it's all part of the same equation. We have to find out the true cost of collection of refuse and disposal. Let me ask you a question. When they raised the fee to $300, did you think that was irresponsible? Ms. Franis, when they raised it to $189, Mr. Evans, well, up to $300, the last time it was increased. Ms. Franis, do I think it was right? Yeah, no, I didn't. Uh, I don't, uh, Mr. Evans, I don't either. I thought it was irresponsible, and the reason I thought it was irresponsible was because the true cost of collection was not part of that equation. So it's equally responsible to lower the rate until we find out exactly what the cost is. Mrs. Franis, they're still, they're not lowering the rate, they're keeping it at $300. Mr. Evans, right, but we want to lower the rate if we can find out the true cost. Uh, 2018, uh, and I, Mr. Evans, 2018, what? Ms. Franis, that's, that's when you might lower it, not 2017. Mr. Evans, well, yeah, most likely. Ms. Franis, last summer you wanted it lowered to the, this year. Mr. Evans, yes, I certainly did. We all did. Mrs. Franis, nothing was done about it, was Mr. Evans, we tried. Mrs. Franis, you know why, because you're not raising taxes so you have to make up the money someplace and you said that the reason there is no taxes is whatever. Uh, the reason there is no taxes is because Billy Courtright is running for mayor, that's why there's no taxes. So you wait and see <clears throat> next year what the taxes are. Mr. Evans, we'll see. Mrs. Franis, a lot. And you'll have a lot of reasons for it too, excuses. So people that want to vote for Billy Courtright, I don't know why I put this in, it's, but I'll continue. Uh, there is a method to his madness. Another thing, Mr. Wexler, a couple of weeks ago, I nearly jumped through my television set when Marie Schumacher said that council members lie. You jumped down her throat and that said that she doesn't have a right to say that. Yes, she does. There are many times when the council members have lied, and if you don't like it, that's too bad for you to sit there and say you don't lie. Mr. Wexler, well, I disagree with you also. No, we don't lie. Mrs. Franis, yes, you do. You, th you, th you think to us knowing that that's not true. We have to prove it otherwise. Mr. Wexler, I disagree. Okay, I'll have a little bit more. I'll finish it next week, but this is, very old, and here we are talking about the same issues. And meanwhile, where are all the things? We've got stormwater, we've got this building, we've got other big items that need to be talked about, and where are we? No place. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, our next speaker is Joan Hodewanitz. Joan Hodewanitz, grant resident and taxpayer. Um, it's very hard to hear back there when there's a caucus because, you know, they're facing you and you know what the cousins are like in this room. But I got to say, well, from a little I heard, I was totally underwhelmed, uh, especially when you got to the final question of, you know, if you're doing such a good job, why is our delinquent 
total $16.8 million as of a few weeks ago. I don't think they really answered that question. I think what we got was a lot of smoke and mirrors. You know, oh, we have two wonderful employees downstairs, hama hama. We're all singing kumbaya, we get along, and I'm sure they do. Um, I stopped and talked to Jessica before she left, and I asked her if I request from her a list of all municipal employees by name who have delinquent garbage fees and real estate taxes, which would give me that list, and she said yes. She won't tell me about any disciplinary action, but she'll give me the list of names. And I would like to see that list of names, because there shouldn't be anybody on that list. And if they are on that list, I should go into the treasurer's page, and they, I should see a payment plan when I look up their garbage fees and their taxes. And if I don't see that, I'm going to want to know why. So, and I thought it was ironic that in this morning's paper was the article about Jessup and their garbage collection. If you hope you all read this article, um, they have uh, they charge a hundred dollars a year for pickup for two thousand households. It's done by waste management, and they're thinking about you know giving that money back next year because they got some money in the bank. Uh, Obviously, they don't have a DPW picking up. They have a private company, but $100 versus $300, something doesn't compute. You ought to look at that. Uh, next, last week we were talking about Mr. Kyle Armbruster, uh, the Scranton firefighter who was um, suspected of DUI in uh, a crash in earlier in April, his third DUI. And the question came up, two questions came up. Is he home on paid administrative leave because he's supposed to be on house arrest? I didn't hear an answer to that question. And where does he live? Does he live in Troop or does he live in Scranton? And if he doesn't live in Scranton, does he have a waiver? Or even a Bolzoni type waiver? So I, I would like to know that if we can find that out. Is he home on um, paid administrative leave well, he's on house arrest, and where does he live? Uh, next, item 5B, um, the audit, uh, which is being recommended to go to Kohansky as the lowest bidder for the upcoming audits through uh, 2021. I, um, well, first of all, are we still going to use rainy and rainy until, you know, um, the second coming of Christ, or are the people upstairs in Mr. Bolzoni's office finally going to learn how to do audit prep after five years of hand-holding? As far as I know, we're still using rainy rainy for pre-audit. That, 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 is, that is disappointing. I have other adjectives I can use, but I'm a lady. That should stop. And if after five years the staff can't learn how to do it, maybe we should be looking for new staff. But I saw in the proposal that Kohansky sent forward that they're going to have the audit completed by the end of September. And you know I'll be right here asking for it, okay? And if not, why not? And so it should be done by then. Enough waiting. Uh, and also that brings up the question of revising the Home Rule Charter. Uh, has and that anybody given thought to getting that motion started? I have asked Emil to investigate that for me, and I'll talk to him again about it again. Okay. I'm, I'm a, as you know, I'm a proponent of the Home Rule Charter uh, to be studied once again. Well, it's, it's out of date. And uh, if during motions you could talk about any updates you have on uh, stormwater management, in 192 days, our MS4 permit runs out, so we need to know where we're going. We have the bids in, and we need to know who's going to be picking up the baton and how that's going to move forward. And I agree with Fran that uh, as soon as we start a stormwater fee, you better believe they're going to be stormwater fee delinquencies, and you can take that to the bank. Thank you. Our next speaker is Les Spindler. Good evening, Council. Les Spindler, city resident, homeowner, taxpayer. Uh, Councilman Perry, I disagree with you when you said about giving people a break and the interest of penalties, which I stated last week also. It was their decision not to pay this. They shouldn't be getting a break. And I'll tell you a story. 
a businessman in the city who owns an auto repair business, told me a story about himself. He lives on Oak Avenue in the Manuka section. His bill was being mailed to Oak Street in North Scranton. So he didn't pay his bill for a while. He wasn't forgiven on fees and penalties. It wasn't his fault, the bill went to a wrong house. So here he had to pay his fees and penalties when he was totally, he wanted to pay, but he wasn't getting his bill. So why should these people get a break? I'm totally against giving them a break when this man wasn't given a break, when the city made the mistake, not him. And uh, that's enough on that. Uh, city Hall, I meant to ask this the last couple of weeks, who has the final say on whether this building is sold or not? Does anybody know? I would think all the city council as well as the mayor, administration and council, that should be a, a combined vote for sure. We'll have an opportunity, that's for, no doubt about it. Okay, thank you. Uh, does anybody else on council agree with uh, what Mr. Evans said and what I agree with last week about doing a piece at a time instead of doing this all at once? Yeah, absolutely. And I was going to comment on it, but we talked we talked the issue at you know at some length last time. There are going to be some projects that have to be done, like some of the piping. I believe we talked about that that ha the piping has to be done all at once, and it's a major project, and it would put City Hall and all their uh, occupants out for an extensive amount of time while the entire piping and the heating system gets changed out. That would be something that has to be done all at once, but other things can be done uh, separately, starting from you know outside in, strengthen your house from the outside, work your way into some more of the cosmetic things. So I absolutely, absolutely agree. Well, like I said last week, if the roof needs repair, do that this year, then do sure. another part next year. That way you're not paying 10.7 or whatever it is all at one time. Right, and we might even qualify for more uh, grant money that way to help alleviate it. Right, thank you. Uh, next thing, I brought this up quite a few times. And the flooding problem on Dorothy Street when we have heavy rains on the side the baseball fields run and the other side where the basketball court and tennis courts are. Uh, I really never noticed until last week because it's usually covered by water all the time. The side that the tennis courts are on, the reason it's getting flooded, there's a cut out there. I don't know if there used to be a driveway or what, but there's no curb. So that's why that sidewalk is getting flooded. And as I said, it's, you can't walk on that side of the street after a heavy rain because <laughs> sidewalk's all flooded. So if they could put a curb in there, that wouldn't happen. So maybe the DPW director could take a look at that and see. I don't know why that cutout is there. I don't think it's for a handicapped accessibility because that's not a corner. It's in the middle of the block. And which block is that on? Do you know off the top of it's, your head? I'm not sure what block it is, but it's where, it's where the tennis courts are. Okay. There's only, you know, it's around the playground. There's only one playground on Dorothy Street. And it's right between the tennis courts and the basketball courts. Ah, uh, that's all I have tonight. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Our next speaker tonight is going to be John Morrow. If it pleases the council, I'll be sharing my time with my colleague. We are speaking tonight on behalf of the Lackawanna County Green Party. And well, th this, just as long as you know, John, this is your time, and yes, this is only shared. for one oh, person. Yes, by all means. It's split. Good. No worries. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Bill Pilconis, Scranton resident, taxpayer, and uh, enthusiastic citizen. Um, I addressed you guys last year. Uh, this is once again our Green Week of Action. We as the Lackawanna County Green Party like to focus on the week around uh, Earth Day to bring light to a lot of issues in this valley and uh, you know hopefully take steps to start to solve them. Um, I'm going to talk this week about one of our four pillars which is social justice and uh, uh, how it relates to an event we had this weekend. Uh, we had the fourth annual Cannabis Fest up in Nayog Park, and regardless of your personal feelings on, you know, uh, the legalization or use of medical cannabis or anything like that, it is an extremely successful event. It brings tens of thousands of people into the city once a year. They spend tons of money, and it is also helping to highlight an issue that is near and dear to many people in the Commonwealth, and that is um, medical issues. We have rampant uh, opioid abuse and opioid uh, crises in this valley across the state 
and medicinal marijuana, medicinal cannabis has been offering a really uh, opportune solution to folks. And we think it's inherently important that the city now take that upon themselves to improve our relations in that community. We have dispensaries, we have grow facilities inside the city boundaries, and yet we still have a heavy criminalization and heavy enforcement against it. Now, D.A. Powell has said that he will not, you know, buck federal law and will enforce the laws he has to, but he will only be able to try cases that are brought to him. So if the city takes it upon itself to pass a resolution to decriminalize cannabis, that would allow D.A. Powell to focus his issues, uh, focus his attention on the issues that truly matter in the Valley and to stop criminalizing an issue which has culturally moved beyond that point. We have a huge percentage of folks in the Valley who need uh, medical cannabis or who choose to use it recreationally and to have them constantly demonized by the city's uh, police force and bogging themselves down, frankly, um, is unconscionable. And I think as a council, it behooves you to really write a resolution with some strong language that would allow DA Powell to focus his efforts more thoroughly. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and as today is Earth Day, we would like to address uh, environmental issues that pertain to some of the talking points that have already been addressed tonight, such as solid waste and recycling. We would like to see the city take a more proactive approach towards these issues. I think the best way to address our solid waste issue is by minimizing our solid waste, and in particular, the issue with the plastics. We would like to see the city take the lead on transitioning away from these petrochemical-based plastics. There are many biodegradable plant-based alternatives that can be uh, used by many of these local businesses. We would in particular like to address the issue with the food trucks down on the courthouse square on Friday and Saturday nights. Everything they serve are in these polystyrene clamshells, styrofoam containers. This food is often consumed right there in a matter of minutes. All these single-use plastics are then put either into the landfills where they do not biodegrade or Worse, they contaminate legitimate recyclable plastics and other products. We are asking that the council consider an ordinance requiring the food trucks to stop using these clamshells, the styrofoam. There are other alternatives, and we feel that these businesses, they're not tax-paying brick-and-mortar based businesses here in the city, and this is an issue that has to be addressed. This would be a first step that the council could take towards a just transition away from so many of these plastics, particularly the single-use plastics, as many other states and cities around the country have been taking steps towards. So we would like the council to consider this ordinance. And yeah, thank I, you. I don't, I don't disagree with the, the spirit of that legislation. I think so it not to be selected just against the food trucks it would have to be more of an industry ride uh, industry wide uh, type of legislation more you know we couldn't just single out one particular branch of the restaurant industry but well anybody in the city of scranton would have to abide it, it, that's how i would feel it would be by all means we more would love to see well. yes we would love to see an outright ban on these single use plastics this would be an inter, uh, an incremental step and uh, this is, I think, one of the problems with litter and the solid waste issue in this city. So, well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is Gerard Hetman. Good evening, Council. Gerard Hetman from the Lackawanna County Department of Community Relations. To begin this evening, in the wake of recent severe weather events, that the commissioners would like to remind all residents of the county and beyond that the County Emergency Management Agency offers the Code Red Emergency Notification System. Uh, this is an emergency alert system that can be delivered to your personal phone, via email, uh, or even to a landline phone. Uh, 
again, text, email, landline, cell phones, RSS, or a mobile application push notification. The service is free, and all messages are generated by the Lackawanna County Emergency Management Agency. To register or for more information, visit www.lackawannacounty.org and click on the code red logo and fill out the request form, or call 570-307-7300 and leave a message requesting code red information. Uh, second, there will be a car seat safety check at McDade Park this Friday, April 26th. 10 a.m. to 12.30 p.m., uh, presented by the Traffic Injury Prevention Project. I believe that's a collaborative organization uh, comprising law enforcement and local government agencies. I know the Scranton Police had been uh, promoting this event, so uh, we're happy to see it at McDade Park. Uh, third, there will be a Morning with Mother Goose event at the Electric City Trolley Museum. It's Saturday, April 27th, 9.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. The event features storytelling, a hunt for the golden egg, a face painting, and a trolley ride with Mother Goose. The cost is $10 per child and $5 for accompanying adults for both the museum entry and the trolley ride excursion. Uh, please RSVP by calling the Trolley Museum at 570-963-6590. Also this Saturday, we will host a Vietnam Veterans Commemoration event, again Saturday, April 27th, 11 a.m. at the Lackawanna County Government Center at The Globe. All U.S. military veterans who served on active duty between November 1st, 1955 and May 15th, 1975 are eligible to attend and receive a commemorative lapel pin thanking them for their service. Um, Again, we've seen this program once before. We did this last September. I had an excellent turnout of Vietnam veterans, and uh, this is we've gotten requests to do this again, so we're happy to see the program again um, at the County Administration Building. Um, also, the Lackawanna County Commissioner's Spring 2019 Blood Drive will take place this Friday, April 26th, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Lackawanna County Government Center at The Globe. Uh, Walk-ins are accepted, but appointments are preferred for the convenience of donors and Red Cross staff. Please contact myself, 570-963-6743, extension 1872, for more information or to schedule an appointment. And again, we're excited. This is the first drive in the new building as it's refurbished, uh, so we're hoping to get a good turnout and really make a difference. Also, the 7th Annual Lackawanna County Job Fair takes place Thursday, May 16th, noon to 4 p.m. at PNC Field. We anticipate having over 60 local employers present, bringing a variety of full-time, part-time, seasonal, and internship positions. Um, everyone is welcomed. We've seen a trend in recent years going from in the early years, more of a full-time employment-seeking uh, demographic to more of a student-age population seeking uh, a lot of times summer work, part-time supplemental positions, but we ask all employers to bring everything available, so everyone is welcomed. The event features free parking and admission. Um, anyone can interested for more information, contact my coworker, Caitlin English, at englishk at lackawannacounty.org via email. And last but not least, the County 4-H has their one-day cake decorating camp open for registration. It's Thursday, July 18th, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Vintage Kitchen, 317 Linden Street in Scranton. Open to children ages 8 through 18. $50 cost covers all materials. To register or for more information, call 570-963-6842. That's all we have. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Evans. Our next speaker is Ron Elman. So, you know, like, like most of you, all my life I, uh, up to now, I've heard the expression that the, the best man always wins. It's probably mostly related to sports, but no more. Now, it doesn't matter how qualified you are, how knowledgeable, how educated. All we hear is that it's a woman, got to vote. Got to vote for her. This is this isn't right. You can't express yourself no more in this country. No matter what you say, you can offend somebody. People jump all over you. So, a couple. Uh, it must be two years ago, when I was at the club there was a heated argument about Bruce Jenner. And Roseanne told me, don't open your mouth. And these people, they were going every which way. And the next, well, I don't know, the next time I was in there and something come up like a year later or so, 
All these hypocrites were the opposite way about him. You know, this Frank Scavell lost this election because he expressed the truth, the facts. That's what cost him. Look who won. Bridget is a nurse. That's her experience. What's her education? Nursing school. Compared to a man that had, was knowledgeable in politics and everything else, you, like I said, he, he, he got killed because he expressed himself. This is definitely where the best man didn't win. Now we got uh, this Johnson Harrell, I forget her first name. The first words out of her mouth was to criticize this probably a hundred year old ceremony. You know what's going to happen? What is there, 535 seats in, in the representatives? You wait and see, every last one of them will kiss her behind rather than stand up like a man and say that's how it's been done all these years. It, it won't happen. That's a shame, but that's what's going to happen. And now about Mrs. Dominic. She uh, certainly seems qualified for what I've read about her, but she has two other jobs. I haven't heard nothing so far about her two other jobs. You know, what's she going to do at the council? Hide behind a laptop all day on her dime? She needs to to tell the public what she's going to do about it. Drop them or drop this idea of running with Mr. O'Malley. And I certainly think she's, you know, especially compared to Bridget, she's, she's very qualified. You know, God bless this state for what's happening. I, it, it just, we got absolute inexperienced nobodies running the ship now. Let me tell you real quick to change the subject. Rose and me went to the Goodwill store to kill some time today, and I was in the back where all the glassware is, and this little kid, I don't know, he's three, four years old, he come up to me and said, hi. And boy, he smelled bad. I said, I think you pooped in your pants. He said, I know. I said, well, go tell your mama. He said, I did. I said, well, she told me to go away. I said, go back and stand by her. It, 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 something, something happened, I hope. <laughs> I just thought that was some Americana or something, you know. It, Every time I go to the bathroom at the Taurus Club, I, I hear. If, I think that bell came at the perfect time, Mr. Alman. In a split second. Uh, that's that's your minute. That's your five minutes. That's sir. where I learned about my politics. We were all saved by the bell on that everything. one. You ought to try it. Courtright did. Look, he's the mayor. I'm happy right here. <laughs> Thank you. Maybe that's where he got his experience. Our next speaker, Lee Morgan. Good evening, Council. Um, you know, the first thing I have here is um, when you watch Marie Schumacher here reading, she's reading from the record that at one time was transcribed here. But at this point, those meetings aren't transcribed anymore. So that just goes to prove one thing. Not one council member can say that that record isn't right and precise and correct. She didn't have to go look on the computer for it. She didn't have to hope that YouTube kept that video because it was an obligation the city was under. And the sad part is that our elected officials 
They just don't understand the kind of shape this country's in. But, you know, maybe they'll figure it out before the end comes. Because, you know, we're debating a lot of issues here, but the government's becoming larger and more expensive, consuming every dime that everybody earns. We're here and we're talking about people who can't pay their garbage bills. Why didn't the city just increase taxes to cover those instead of mailing, ma mailing all these bills to all these people? Is the city at its tax caps? You know, you have to ask yourself, why doesn't a government want to keep a record of what its residents are saying to it? Because honestly, the government can't respond. My question is, how much has the PEL earned as the city sold off every single asset it has? And now we're debating a building and what we're going to do here, we're going to abandon this building. And you know what? I'm all for it because I think there needs to be another citizens group in this city and we need to abolish the council and the mayor's office. And we need to stop the flow of federal funds and state funds through this city as a conduit to special interest. Somebody's got to come up and tell me how Nayog Park's pool couldn't be maintained and why the pool on Kapaus Avenue hasn't been repaired, and why we filled the Novembrino pool in, and why we've sold all the city's assets instead of taking an elected government we had, which at this point is right before me, and have this government cut the city's budget and right this ship instead of spending millions of dollars in the park, blowing all kinds of money all over the place. And you know the other thing to think about is, the pension funds are no, in no better shape than they were before. So I really don't know, you know, it's nice to see people running around with suits on, but it's absolutely asinine. And you know, Ron tried to talk about, I guess the gender bias that's spinning in this country against men. It's been spinning a long time and men are still successful. But you know, the sad part is that at one time, women spoke up and made changes in this country, even when they couldn't vote. They forged alliances, brought issues forward that nobody wanted to hear, put them up on the public, for public discussion, and changed this country a multitude of times. And now, that's gone. Public education is in complete retreat in this country. And everything is, give me a couple more tax dollars. The storm water, I don't know, the Grant Sewer Authority had a plan for that, but the council determined, and the, and the Sewer Authority determined, it was going to sell itself. What benefit has anything that this government's done for the thir last 30 years done anything of any worth for the residents of this city? Nothing. There's more blight here. But the grant money and the cash keeps flowing through here one way or another, and it keeps getting to the people it's supposed to be going to. Because those decisions are made in Harrisburg or Washington before that money even gets here. And all you do is vote for it. And then you don't even maintain a public record. Because really, what the ordinary person wants just doesn't matter. But the one thing you have to remember is that at one time there was a king in England, and he determined that what the residents wanted didn't matter. And as a matter of fact, if you go to France and you go to Marie Antoinette, she said, let the peasants eat cake. You know how that turned out. And that's what's coming in this country, and it's going to be terrible. And all the people that sat home and didn't vote and didn't think it mattered, and the government who just levied one tax after another, and a court, a judicial court, has armed itself against its own citizens, isolated itself in utter fear of the people it represents. Thank you. Our next speaker is Neil Ackerman. Hello, my name's uh, Neil Ackerman. I'm uh, 603 Madison Avenue, and i uh, professor of mathematics at the University of Scranton, and uh, I've been there for uh, a long time. And I came here today uh, to talk about the swimming pool. 
uh, I've been uh, swimming there for the last uh, 35 years with my children and uh, now my grandchildren. And before I even start what I want to talk about, I'd like to know uh, how many of you uh, have been uh, swimming in the uh, New York Park in the last uh, year or so? Anybody in the council have been there in the New York Park? I, I've been in Nayog Park, but I haven't been in the pool. Swimming, since okay. You know, not not swimming since I was Okay, so this, the reason I'm saying that is so I can, anybody in the audience, do have any people that swim in the Nayog Park? Only one or two people. All right, so anyway, uh, to get to the point this way, I want to know how uh, detailed I have to get to the, uh, the issue. Let me read what I wrote. Uh, it was published in the, uh, in the uh, Times uh, 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 newspaper in the editorial section a few few uh, days ago, and someone else also followed up with something very similar. I handed out the sheet to most of the people, uh, the council members before. So I, uh, let me just read it, this and this will sum up, and then I'll go into a little detail if I have a few minutes. Uh, upon reading uh, the adult, about the adult swimming pool would not reopen, but would be filled in to make for a splash park, I was and remain filled with sadness and, yes, anger. I urge the City Council to reconsider this drastic move, and I hope that the thousands of residents of Scranton who enjoy the swimming pool swimming at Nayog would make their dissatisfaction known to the Council and the Recreation Head as soon as possible. For the information of the Council members and those not familiar with the catastrophic consequences of closing the adult pool, I will briefly describe the situation because I've been there every summer, you know, almost every day in the summer, uh, 40 or 50 times each, each day, each uh, season. There are two pools for those people. There's one is a big pool for the adults, for the adults, and there's a small pool for a smaller pool for the children. Divers and lap swimmers, which I am one of the lap swimmers and my kids are the divers, use the adult portion, which is about 120 feet by 75 feet. It's very, very big, put it that way. And then there's a second pool, a smaller pool there, which has uh, is, uh, one part is for toddlers, for my grandchildren that are two years old and three years old, they can't swim. And then the other thing is divided into a, a third of the part for the uh, uh, water slide. And then there's a narrow portion. The portion is, oh, I don't know about what I put down here uh, exactly. I said it's 20 feet by 75 feet for the children from four to eight years old. It's only three and a half feet deep. That's all, three and a half feet deep for the most part. And it's crowded with little kids there. Now, on a regular and a hot day, what they're trying to do, if they take and destroy the big pool, that means all the people the adults, the teenagers, and the people with uh, older people are going to have to move into this small portion of pool, which is already uh, crowded from little kids, you know, seven, four, and five, and six year old kids. And they're all they're going to be able to do. They can't, it's going to come up to their waist. And when it's 90 degrees out and 80 degrees out, they're just, there's not going to be enough room. And what's going to happen to that? The people that are there are going to have what's going to have a terrible experience. And this is what's going to happen. After they have one or two days, one day that, all these kids and the teenager, and believe me, if you see, I don't want to embarrass anyone here, but there's so many teenagers and kids there that are, it's obese. It just, it, you cry when you see it. It is the time they can at least, you know, they're in a swimming pool and they're diving and they're getting some type of ex exercise. And what happens when you close that pool? the big pool, and they're all just going to stand around. They're going to get disgusted with all these little kids. There's no place to swim or anything like that. And they're going to go home. Like, what do they do? Go into an air-conditioned room. And what are they going to do for the rest of the day? They sit and play video games. They get more without any activity. Now, that's what we're going to do if you try and close the, the, the big pool. Now, somebody said, oh, you know, it costs millions of, nobody says how much money. All of a sudden, I read in a newspaper, you say, what did they say? They said they're going to, they're going to, it's cost, they're going to put a splash park in, a splash park for the little kitties. Come on, you know, you have a beautiful swimming pool. How much, they said it's cost too much. Well, no one said how much it costs. Well, I, I would say, suppose it costs $2 million to, to, to put in a new pool, you know, put it in. The last pool we had last, this pool lasted 50 years. Even if you take two million divided by 50 years, it's $40,000 a year for the enjoyment of the people of the city of Scranton. My time is up. I urge the council, do not fill it in 
until you try and exhaust every possible way to try and uh, uh, save the pool because it's uh, for the benefit of the city of Scranton. 50 years we got out of it. 50 years we can for the amount of, fix it up and we'll have another 50 years. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that's all the names on the sign-in sheet. Is there anybody else that would like to address council tonight? Fifth order, five A motions. Mr. Donny, do you have any motions or comments tonight? Uh, yes, just quickly. Um, one thing I didn't get to in our caucus, I didn't get to ask the Northeast Revenue. Uh, Ms. Reed, would you be able to uh, follow up with them and see if they could send us uh, a breakdown of their uh, interest and costs that they charge? The city gets the face value and the penalty, but then they collect also collect uh, collect interest and cost on their end. So just a breakdown of that. Um, and also we got a update on the uh, street sign management system that uh, the company came in, drove the streets, and we're just waiting for the data to be put into an online system so the city could review to go through and start getting the street signs changed out with the right reflexivity. And that's all I have this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Donahue. Mr. Evans, any motions or comments tonight? Uh, yeah, I'd like to comment briefly on uh, NRS. They, NRS is the agency that uh, collects the delinquent refuge fees for the city of Scranton, so we met with them earlier this evening. Now, it was somewhat informative, but it has not changed my mind that the whole process is broken. And it's been broken ever since we went to a refuse fee instead of keeping the cost embedded into our tax base as it always was prior to that. So I want to preface my, my remarks by saying that I'm not going to discuss the $300 fee that's currently in litigation. I'm not going to discuss if it's fair, if it's accurate, should it be more, should it be less. I'm going to talk about the process of collecting the fee. Like many of our fees and taxes, like the rental registration fee and the business privilege and mercantile tax, the, re the refuse fee has been another example of historically having a poor collection response. Currently, the collection rate, as we heard tonight, is approximately 75%. Our delinquent tax collection rate for property is around 90%. It seems that we are continu continuously chasing our tail, trying to find ways to increase the collection rates, and we never quite seem to keep pace as to what they actually should be. But there's something fundamentally wrong when the tax or fee is not collected at the rate it was designed for, either through a lack of competence, poor systems, or maybe it was just a bad idea in the first place. I happen to think the refuse fee and the business privilege and mercantile tax are both bad ideas. Over the years, I think that line of thinking has been proven out over and over and over again. Now we have plans to fix the latter by replacing the business and privilege tax and the mercantile tax with the payroll tax, uh, hopefully by 2020. It's a broader and fair distribution of that revenue and far more collectible. But how do we fix the idea or the collection of the refuse fee that has been broken for decades when every year 25% of those that are, should be paying aren't paying the fee at all? We continue to try to mend a broken system and never achieve the results we expect. And let's not forget all of those efforts to collect this, this fee comes with an expense, the expense related to its general collection, which includes the mailing of the bills and receiving payments at City Hall. We have the expenses related to the collection of the delinquencies, and we have the expenses related to a poor performing recycling program because those that actually do recycle do so because they think it's the right thing. There is no incentive whatsoever for the citizens of Scranton to recycle. So what do we do? Well, first of all, we have to recognize that when something's not working as intended, you make changes. The status quo is not working. So what are the options? Well. Besides keeping the status quo, here are several op options I think we might be able to address the situation or at least look at. Number one, should we fully embed the entire $300 trash fee back into the property tax bill? bill? This should eliminate some of the expenses mentioned above and increase the collection rate to parallel the collection rate of the 90% on delinquent property. With this option, the city has the ultimate tool. You don't pay your taxes, you could lose your property. Number two, we could partially embed an amount in the property tax bill that could account for a baseline that would safely cover some of the expense related to trash collection while also shifting to a modest per bag fee. Expecting increased recycling and reduced expenses to make up the difference. This could be called a hybrid plan. 
And three, we could go to a slightly higher per bag fee than option two and not embed anything in additional in the tax base and save through increased recycling as well as reduce expenses to balance what is needed. So as I mentioned earlier, we can just stay the course and chase delinquencies and complain about the $3 fee and go around and around with the same issue year in and year out. I guess what I'd like to know is really what the majority of citizens want. We hear from citizens every week and we have a clear idea what some of the citizens want. But we need to know more. We need to know what people are thinking. So I'd like to see a greater response on what they really want us to do with this issue. That's my opinion. I think it needs to go away. But I'm not endorsing any, option, any of those options at this particular moment. What I am endorsing is a change from a broken system to a system that is more cost effective, that works for all of us and is more, more inherently fair across the board. So hopefully, we should all be interested in hearing from the public as to what they might prefer. I am certainly interested in hearing other ideas on this issue that we may not even have thought of. But most of all, we need to talk about this, to come together on a plan, come together on a strategy, to move forward in a world where we don't have $16 million owed to the city. We need to keep preparing, we have to stop repeating the current mode of operation and process over and over and over again and expecting a different result. That's the definition of insanity. So we need to move ahead, come together, come up with a plan, come up with a strategy, and work together to solve this thing. But I do know one thing, the current process, the current systems, the current concept doesn't work. And that's all I have for tonight. Thank you, Mr. Evans. Mr. Gauhan, motions or comments tonight? Uh, yes, um, just to address, I know that I think the gentleman left, Mr. Ackerman, um, uh, regarding the swimming pool at Neog Park. Uh, City Council, we don't have any authority over Neog Park. That is the um, recreation authority. So even if the majority of council were against closing that pool, we really don't have any say um, in that. That, I think, uh, I don't know if they have to take a vote at the Recreation Authority. I wasn't here two or three weeks ago when Mr. Gattins and uh, another gentleman came yeah, in. Yeah, Mr. Gauhan, they said they vote, there was a unanimous vote. Okay, so there was a vote and it was unanimous, thank you. Um, but, but we don't have any control over that. But I do understand his, his uh, comments. It, um, I did talk to Mr. Gattins about this. Um, you know, the more I talk to people about this issue, it would be my hope, and I don't know if it's possible, to hold off on filling in the pool until uh, you can get funds for a splash park or whatever they want to do, only because I think he, is, he has a good point in that when they do fill that pool in, um, there's going to be a huge overcrowding issue in the smaller pool. So I think he brought up some very good points tonight. Um, Mrs. Reed, if we could send uh, correspondence, I know we did months and months ago, but I talked to a gentleman who lives on Linwood Avenue. Uh, we also received um, course, or an email from Mr. Welby from Marty Flynn's office about this issue. But, but this uh, family that lives on Linwood Avenue is having some serious stormwater runoff issues. It's gotten to the point now where it's literally washing away his home um, and his driveway. So they're afraid they're going to lose the bottom uh, portion of their, their house after speaking with him this afternoon. So if we could send a uh, correspondence to the DPW just asking them if they would address that issue. Um, the gentleman that I talked to used to work for PennDOT. It's his belief that it wouldn't be that you know big of a, a deal to fix it. They might have to add in pipes or, um, or something to that effect. So um, if we could send that, I'd appreciate it. Also, uh, the street sweeping schedule. I know I mentioned it last week. I'll mention it again. North Scranton area, Greenbush Street to Market Street, April 29th to May 3rd, and Market Street to Ravine Street, May 6th to May 10th. Uh, last week I mentioned about alternate side of the street parking so that the street sweepers could actually sweep the streets. As I mentioned last week, it's very difficult to have an efficient street sweeping program when you don't have a plan like that in place uh, because when people are parked in front of their homes, it's impossible to actually get to the curb. So we didn't receive a response. I doubt that uh, anything's going to be done this year. But moving forward, as I mentioned last week, and, and I actually uh, got some responses from people who watched the meeting last week who agreed, it makes no sense to have a street sweeping program without some type of alternate side of the street parking, whether it's um, you know, on a, a trial basis, try it in a neighborhood, I don't know. But there are many cities throughout uh, Pennsylvania and throughout the United States 
that successfully have an alternate side of the street program uh, for their street sweeping operation. Also, I, I uh, received a note from uh, a gentleman, something interesting that I, I want to bring up, and I want to forward this to the, uh, uh, to the mayor and the administration. Um, the, there was uh, mayors throughout the area, and this actually goes along with Earth Day and the, the two people that spoke earlier. Uh, the article's from the Pocono Record, and it says, Mayors Commit to Future of Solar Energy. And I think down in Stroudsburg, uh, the mayor was able to acquire through an LSA grant a solar-powered trash compactor. Um, this it comes from waste management. Um, it's solar-powered. It helps keep public spaces clean, and it can reduce trash, trash collections by up to 80%. But I think a few weeks ago when we had the conversation about uh, renovating City Hall, I really think we need to move in the direction of having a major citywide green initiative to reduce costs and to become more efficient. One of the ways we can do that is, is looking at uh, our DPW and, and, so, and uh, some of the aspects there. So I, Mrs. Reed, I'd like to forward this article, and um, uh, there's actually two articles here, to the mayor and the DPW director to see if they would be interested um, in doing that. Um, also sent a letter last week to the mayor about the ethics board. Um, I think all five members of council objected to the uh, mayor's uh, pick, although we didn't vote on it. The mayor sent us a letter, uh, Dennis D'Augustine, who's the chaplain for the uh, fire department. Unfortunately, I'm sure Mr. D'Augustine would have did a great job, uh, wasn't questioning that last week. It, but it does violate, as our solicitor pointed out in a letter to the city solicitor, it violates the ethics legislation that you cannot be on the ethics board if you are a member of any city uh, committee. I did pose a letter to the mayor, though, last week, simply asking um, if he is advertising for these positions, for the two picks that he has, and is he publicly soliciting resumes and applications. We're going on uh, weeks now with we have our two picks. The city controller has a pick. We're still waiting on the mayor. Um, so, you know, unless the mayor is advertising for these positions and soliciting resumes and applications as council did, uh, I think it's going to be difficult to find two people. I think you should open it up publicly and then see who uh, submits a resume and an application. I think that only makes sense. On the uh, public caucus, I thought it was underwhelming myself. I do appreciate uh, the city solicitor uh, coming and uh, Mr. Beck and the representatives from NRS. Um, as I mentioned in the caucus, if I don't pay my Comcast bill, they shut my cable off. They don't put a lien on my house and then I still get to watch TV. If I don't pay my electric bill, they shut my lights off. If I don't pay my gas bill, they shut my heat off. So at what point, and I pose this in the caucus, at what point, like what is the incentive for anyone to pay this trash fee? 75% of the civic-minded people in this city are paying $300. And you have a quarter of the population um, who is kind of thumbing their noses. Now, I know that there are some cases where people fall on hard times. They can't come up with the money. That is understandable. But if you go through that list, as Mr. Evans pointed out, and you see out-of-town landlords, like the one from New York who owes $120,000, how are they allowed to still do business in this city? So again, if I'm Jane Smith and I'm 80 years old and I'm paying $300 a year and I look at this list of people who are not paying, why should I pay? Put a lien on my house, big deal. There has to be something else. One of the ideas that was brought up was not picking up the, the garbage. I don't think that's a terrible idea. Um, as I mentioned last week when Mrs. Franis brought it up, I would need to see a, a detailed plan from the administration on how they would enforce that. Um, will there be garbage all over the place? I don't know, but it's, I'll tell you what, it's an incentive for people to pay the fee if you, you're not gonna get your garbage picked up. There's, the city has to get serious about this. So I would like Mrs. Reed to send a letter to the mayor because I think we need leadership on this issue from uh, Mayor Courtright on number one, whether or not he is going to reevaluate the contract with NRS um, and whether we're gonna continue with NRS, the contract re-ups every year. They've had it since 2012. I mean, you know, when, when's that going to give? You know, we're questioning it tonight, but is that just going to continue? They have the refuse, they have the uh, tax delinquent, um, real estate taxes, and they have the rental registration. 
So that's a concern. The other thing I'd like to know from the mayor is, and you know, the administration that was here tonight answered it uh, you know, somewhat, what is the plan? Are we just going to continue to lean properties and, as Councilman Evans said, run in circles and just keep doing the same thing over and over again? Because if we do that, it's a slap in the face to all of the 75% of the people, like Mr. Spindler and Mrs. Schumacher and others, who pay the $300 every year. So I am more than willing, and I know my colleagues are more than willing, to working together with the mayor and the administration, but something has to change. And I think the first thing we should do is reevaluate the contract with NRS. One of the things I brought up tonight, uh, questions I brought up, was whether or not we can bring it in-house and take out the middleman. In other words, why can't the Treasury Department uh, do that work? If we have to hire two or three more people, let's see a plan from the mayor and maybe that's an alternative that we go with. But, I mean, what's the incentive for NRS to collect the uh, trash fee? They just sit back. I had this conversation with Councilman Donahue today. And they tack on penalties and interest, and that's it. And they wait. Maybe, maybe they pay, maybe they don't. But, there, again, there's no, 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 no incentive. If you can't pay a $300 garbage fee and you owe $40,000, lean my house. What do I care for if you lean my house? I'm probably not going to sell it anyways. So th I think that's, the com that's what people on the street in the city are saying. At least that's what they're saying to me and I'm sure to some of my colleagues. So is this a complex problem? Yes. When the newspaper did an analysis, when the fee went from 178 to 300, that's when the delinquencies went up. So I think that has uh, part of it too. And of course the lawsuit uh, has come into play as well. But we do need leadership from the administration and I do think that uh, something's got to give and we need, we need a change because if we're not going to enforce it and we're not going to take it serious, then Ms. Hodawanis brought up a great point. When the stormwater fee comes, why pay that? Why pay it? You, I mean, you're going to put a lien on my house? Big deal. So we've got to get serious about it. Otherwise, we're going to run in circles and, um, you know, it's not fair to the 75% that pay it. That's my spiel for this week. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gawhead. Um, yeah, I have a couple things. The first thing, um, it, Mr. Spindler brought up that missing curbing on Dorothy Street. If we can have uh, Director Gallagher take a look at it, I'm not sure. I'm not really familiar with that cutout that you're speaking of, but I'm sure it's there. If you can just take a drive by or send somebody up there and see if it's an easy fix of just putting in some asphalt curbing and, and, and just uh, easing that little ponding issue, the flooding issue over there. Uh, that'd be fantastic. As far as the garbage, I, I, I'm going to echo just about what everybody said up here already, uh, but I'll, I'll give you some of my personal opinions, maybe go a little bit deeper on that. Uh, I want to thank the city treasurer and the solicitor and uh, North, Northeast Revenue Service for coming in today. Uh, but, you know, this, this issue, there's, a, there's two problems right now what's going on. It's trying to collect what's hasn't been collected already and how are we going to get better at collecting in the future you know we're, we're at that we're at that zero point in the graph right now where we have a lot of catching up to do and if we don't fix our problem we're never going to get better at it in the future uh, I believe it was Mr. Evans talked about embedding that into the property tax that is something that I am absolutely 100 percent for uh, there's a couple different ways to go about it uh, I think we, saw, we we talked about the hybrid uh, program a little bit uh, I think that would just put more undue pressure to go buy bags and to put those out while that would help generate more recycling in the area one of the better programs or better part of the programs that we have in the city of Scranton with our garbage collection is we can pretty much put out whatever we want the garbage men will take it that's that's a luxury that we have we're paying for it right now but it's a luxury that we have and if we can get more people to pay that same piece of the pie instead of having less pay more mentality like sometimes the city of Scranton has, we'd be much, much better off. And that's something I would like to see is it getting embedded into the property tax where it has more teeth. Because right now this lien system is a joke. Uh, it's just on there and it's forgotten about. And, if, and that's it. And I, I have no faith in the lien system. Uh, we brought this up at, during the caucus. It does protect our interest, but what interest? It doesn't protect our interest this year. It doesn't protect them next year. It protects them down the road. When all else fails and the roof falls in and they sell their house or pass away or whatever, then that money, once that property changes uh, hands, then we'll, see, we'll recoup some of that. Where will we be then? What other issues will we have? You know, right now we have roads that need to be paved and we have a building that needs to be repaired. We have things to do. And we need some more, we need, we need some harder, faster answers for this. 
uh, something I'm in for of going back. I brought up, I know, Sp Mr. Spindler, you and I are kind of on the opposite sides of the fence in this, but I think uh, we need to get some of these people who owe some big bills to start paying, to start getting on a monthly program. And if they're on that monthly program, I'm willing to negotiate with them on what bad debt they have that might be alleviated. We're, we're not talking about somebody who owes $500 or $600, but if someone owes our city $60,000, I'm willing to take $45,000 off them instead of just letting that collect and collect and collect. Because to me, that's ghost money. You know, that's, that's bad debt. That's money out. How are we going to get that? So if there's a way to find it, that's, that's what I would like to do. Um, you know, and I think Mr. Gauhan touched on this. Uh, I'm, I, I lost my confidence in Northeast Revenue. Uh, I'm not saying they're not a competent company. They're not the best that we can do for a city. We're the customer. They're not the customer, we're the customer. I think we should be auditioning people to do this. There's other companies that do this. Uh, if, if they were a credit card company, they'd be out of business because they're not doing enough to, to protect their interests. So I, I would like to see bids opened up. This is a year by year contract, which gets renewed year by year. And I think, I think we should take a serious look. I think uh, in-house is an excellent idea. I think. Uh, Mr. Beck should be, he should be in on this. He should be put together his, his idea of what it would take for our department to do it in-house, as well as we can find third-party people that, people that are more successful doing this. And let's hear from them. Let's have them sit down. What are some actions? When are the last time you had debts this far back and this tough to collect? What did you do? And what is your record? And how did it outcome? And how did it benefit the, your customer? You know, let's ask those questions. Let's get different people in here. Let's get them bidding on themselves to get our services, because that's what we have right now. We have a great service, and that is our, our garbage fee. And they should be fighting to get it, not being complacent and not doing what I think they should be doing, and that's not uh, collecting the fee. All right, I'll get off my soapbox there. Um, I, I, I try to keep personal and, and business aside, but I'm gonna, I'll do a little personal uh, tonight. Uh, tonight, tonight's my wife's birthday, and I just want to say happy birthday to her. Uh, as most of you know, she was in the fight of her life last year, and this is her very first birthday uh, after ringing the bell at the, the cancer center, and this is her first, uh, first year that she's actually having a birthday that she's cancer-free, uh, and I'm just so proud of her, all the hard work she did. Uh, it, was, it was a struggle for her, and God bless her, she's stronger than I could ever hope to be. And uh, I just want to, you know, she watches every Monday, you know, sometimes watches and I come home like, why do you go back every Monday? You get yelled at all the time. And uh, it, it's, because, it's because we love it. We, we, we love to help and, you know, sometimes we take our licks, but that's fine. That's, that's, what, that's what city government is. We do our very best, I can tell you that. And I just want to tell, tell you, Lori, I love you. And uh, uh, thank you for everything. And uh, I'll see you soon. That's all I have tonight. 5B, for introduction of resolution authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to execute and enter into a contract with the Kohansky and Company PC to provide the city of Scranton independent post audit for fiscal years ending December 31, 2018, December 31, 2019, December 31, 2020, and December 31, 2021. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5B be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question, all those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it, so moved. 5C for introduction of resolution, approving the financing by the Scranton Lackawanna Health and Welfare Authority of certain capital projects for the benefit of Marywood University, a Pennsylvania not-for-profit corporation, declaring that it is desirable for the health, safety, and welfare of the people of the city of Scranton, Lackawanna County, Pennsylvania, and the area served by Marywood University to have the project provided by and financed through the authority designating the mayor of the city or in the mayor's absence, the president or vice president of the city council as the person to act on behalf of the city council as the applicable elected representative within the meaning of the Internal Revenue Code of 1986 as amended authorizing such mayor of the city or the president or vice president of the city council of the city to take certain actions on behalf of the city council of the city as such applicable elected representative and authorizing other necessary and appropriate action. 
At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5C be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. Se On the question, all those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it, so moved. Sixth order, 6A, no business at this time. Seventh order, 7A, no business at this time. If there's no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. This meeting's adjourned.